Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Well, we're at the end of the book. We're on Lesson 15. And in Lesson 15, we're talking about magnets. So, as you can see, this is a magnet here. It has a north pole and a south pole. We'll talk about that some more later. In this unit, we will discover the properties of a magnet. The properties of a magnet, what are properties? The properties are the characteristics or the, the things we can say about something. What can we say about magnets? How do they work? What sorts of forces do they use? These are all the properties of a magnet, and that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson today. So let's get on with the vocabulary. Our first word, of course, is magnet, right? That's what we're talking about. A magnet. A magnet is a piece of metal. It's a piece of metal, like this piece of metal. Some magnets are shaped like this that attracts iron or steel. So some magnets are shaped like this. By the way, what shape do we call this? What is this shape? This shape looks like the shoe that a horse wears. So we call this a horseshoe. This is a horseshoe shape. A horseshoe shape. Because a horse, you know, we, we make a, 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 a foot or a shoe for the, uh, for the horse. The foot of the horse is like this, so that is the shape of a horseshoe. Some magnets are shaped like this, but many other magnets are just shaped like this. And this is a bar shape. Bar. So magnets have horseshoe shapes, very common, and they also have bar shapes, right? And then this would be, see this one is north, this one is south. So one part here, this might be north, and this would be south. We'll talk about that later. Okay, but a magnet is a piece of metal in this shape or this shape that attracts iron or steel to it. Iron is what attracts it to. Steel is a, uh, something that human beings make from iron. So they both have iron and it attracts it. You can see all these little paper clips. These, of course, are paper clips. Paper clips are made of steel. They have iron in them and they are attracted to the magnet. Okay, so that's very interesting. We'll talk about attract too. So we're talking about magnets in this unit. Okay, remember on the previous slide, we were talking about magnets and I pointed out North Pole and South Pole. Pole is a very important thing to think about when we talk about magnets. And this is a good picture showing the red part is the North Pole and the South part, the blue part, is the South Pole. Where do we also hear about poles, right? If you think about the Earth, the Earth also has a North Pole and a South Pole, doesn't it? So the North Pole is up here, the South Pole is down here. That's when people first found out or discovered magnets. And what they found was a force or energy that's called magnetism. 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 So a long, long time ago, actually thousands of years ago, people found out that iron would turn, if you put it in water, a small piece of iron, if you put it in water, it would turn a certain way. Of course, it was pointing north. It would point north. So a pole is one of the two ends of a magnet. Uh, uh, some pieces of iron were actually, they were magnets, and they would point north. It's very interesting when we look at magnetism, the force or the energy in a magnet is always flowing from the north to the south. So if you can see it, we can't see it, but the energy or the force is going like this, okay? And there's also some going, but that gets lost, right? It's going, oh, the wrong way, <laughs> okay? But it's the north is emitting the magnetism, the force, and the south is attracting it, it's picking it up. We'll talk about that some more. But whether it's a horseshoe shape or a bar shape, that's the way that the force works. So a pole is one of the two ends of a magnet, and if you think about it, the earth is a magnet. So we also have a north pole and a south pole on the earth. And that, but north pole and south pole, that tells us which way the magnet is pointing. And that's how people a long time ago could find out, oh, that way is north. Okay, so it's very interesting. 
Okay, so I've talked a little bit about attracted, right? Um, when the small piece of iron, it points north because it's attracted to that way, right? The energy is flowing from the north, uh, from the north part of the magnet to the south part of the magnet. So when we see this, the north part is attracted to the south part because the magnetism, the force is coming from the north and it's picked up by the south. So that means there's a force of attraction. Attract means to pull towards something. So if these two magnets, these are bar magnets, bar shaped magnets, if you put them north side to south side, they will pull towards each other. They will attract each other. And that's very interesting. We have a video of this. It's a very interesting video to watch. So let's take a look. Here we have a pile of iron or steel pieces, right? What are they? They're screws, right? These are screws. We use those with the screwdriver to make things out of wood, but they're made out of iron. There's screws and there's other, other pieces also here, but mostly screws. What happens if we put a magnet down here? What's going to happen? Well, as we can see, here comes a magnet, right? Whoa, and it stops because that, those pieces of steel attract the magnet and the magnet can pull up all those pieces of steel because of magnetism. Here it comes back down, boom, right? Okay, but those pieces of metal are stuck to the magnet. They are stuck to the magnet because of attraction. They are stuck to. They are stuck to, or of course you would say stick to, for the present tense, stick to. So they stick to the magnet. They are stuck to the magnet uh, because of the attraction between the force that's going through. By the way, if this is north and this is a south, that force it creates a very strong force. It's much stronger in a horseshoe shape than it is in a bar shape. There's still a force there, but this shape creates a much stronger force so it can pick up more metal. And that's what's going on there. So that's very, very interesting. Okay. Okay, so we just saw the magnet attracting metal, but we can also see that magnets can also repel each other, push away. Remember, the magnetism force is coming out of the north end. It's coming out of the north end. So if we turn the bar magnets so that north meets north, what's happening? Well, the force is pushing against each other, right? The magnetism is coming out, but it's coming out and meeting head on. It's like crashing, right? And they don't like each other. They're pushing. They're repelling each other. Repel means to push away. So this is pushing. This is pushing. So they don't, they, they don't attract each other. They repel each other. So they go away from each other. And that's interesting to note, too, that uh, uh, these two sides, they don't like each other, so they will be pushing away from each other. This is an experiment you can try. If you have two magnets, right? Try that out. Put the north end of the magnet against the north end of another magnet. You can push them around on the table. They won't touch, but they're repelling each other. They're pushing away from each other. So that's very interesting uh, uh, force or very interesting feature of magnets, especially with bar magnets. You can do that. Okay. We've talked a little bit about the types of things that magnets attract. One thing we've talked about was iron. Iron is a metal, right? This is a, a, a hunk of iron ore, right? This is raw iron that you find in the ground. This is a metal that is used, of course, to make many things. Iron is a heavy metal, but it's a hard metal, right? And we can shape it. Of course, a long time ago, they used to make spears and arrowheads out of it. For weapons, it was used primarily. Also for shields. It's a hard, useful metal. But one thing about iron that's very interesting when we talk about magnets is the atoms. Very, very small pieces of the iron. The atoms inside the iron, when you put a magnet near the iron, the atoms will all change direction and point towards the magnet. In iron, this is very common. Actually, magnets exert the same type of force, the same type of attraction on everything. But iron 
has a particular uh, feature of it is that it's very easily, it's very easily to change the direction of the atoms in iron. Other things, they don't change, the, the force is not that strong, so other things are not attracted to metal, like our bodies aren't attracted to magnets, or wood isn't attracted to magnets. But in iron, it's very strongly attracted to magnets, as we saw before, right? So iron is one substance that is attracted by magnetism or the force of the magnet and also steel because steel is a kind of metal that is strong and has iron in it right before i said you know human beings we used iron to make weapons and shields and many tools but then we found out how to use iron in a stronger way and and uh, in a, to make it with very much hotter temperatures and that is steel once we learned how to make steel, we stopped using iron so much. But steel still has iron in it, right? There's still a little bit of iron in it. So if there is iron inside of it, those atoms are still being uh, changed direction. Those atoms still change direction, and they're being attracted by the magnet. So the magnet is still attracting steel because there is iron in steel. Okay, let's move on now to a chart. And we've been talking about magnets, right? We've been talking about the attraction of magnets. We saw the video where the magnet really attracted those screws that I showed you in the video. Now let's take a look at a chart that shows what do magnets attract, what do they attract, and what do they not attract. So do attract, do not attract. Okay, so let's think about that. Remember, things that uh, magnets attract have iron in them, right? So let's take a look. Here we have a picture of iron buttons. So of course they're going to attract these things here, right? But what about plastic? Plastic button. Will an, a magnet attract those? No. They, a magnet does not attract a plastic button. If you hold a plastic button next to a magnet, it will not, uh, the attraction uh, is not strong enough. There's no attraction, not enough traction there, so they won't stick to the magnet. It won't stick to it. Okay, next, a steel spoon. If you hold a steel spoon like this one right here, if you hold a steel spoon next to the magnet, will it stick to it? You bet, it attracts. But if you have a plastic spoon, it doesn't attract. And over here we have a steel car. If we put a magnet next to the steel car, click, right? It will stick to that car, right? So it will attract. But with a wooden car, no, it won't attract that. So we can see here, of course, iron, steel, steel. Things made of iron or steel will be attracted by magnets. But other things like plastic or wood are not attracted by magnets. Uh, they will not stick to a magnet, so there's not enough attraction there. They do not attract, okay? So here we have things that attract, here we have things that do not attract. Okay, let's move on. Let's go over our exercise. We're matching the word to the definition. So here are our words and here are the definitions. We have pull, attract, attract, magnet, magnet, repel, repel, iron, and steel. Okay, so those are our words. Here are the definitions. Let's see how well you remember the vocabulary. Number one, to push away, to push away. Remember, North Pole and North Pole, if, they, if you put them together, they will push away from each other. So they will what? They will repel. Okay, push away, they will repel each other. Repel means to push away. Number two, a strong metal, that has iron in it. We talked about that, right? I told you guys the first humans found iron and used the metal to make tools, weapons, and, and other things with it. But then they found out how to make a stronger metal from iron, still has iron in it, but we don't call it iron anymore. What do we call it? We call it steel. Steel is an improved version of iron. It's a stronger metal, and it's much shinier, too, especially if you polish it. Number three, a piece of metal that attracts iron or steel. So a piece of metal that attracts, 
pulls iron or steel closer to it. What are we talking about in this unit? Of course, we're talking about magnets. So a magnet is a piece of metal that attracts iron or steel. Let's move on to number four. When we talked about the magnet, we talked about two ends of the magnet, and they're very similar to the Earth, right? The Earth actually is a huge magnet, right? And there are two different uh, ends of the Earth. There is the north end and the south end, and same thing with a magnet. So these two ends, what do we call it? The, we call it the north pole and the south pole. So a pole is one of the two ends of a magnet. Okay, number five. Number five is actually the opposite of the first word that we talked about. It's the opposite of this word here, repel, to pull towards something. If you pull something towards you, or if a magnet is pulling iron or steel towards it, what is it doing? It is attracting, to attract, to pull toward. It's the opposite of repel. So these are pandero, right? Attract, repel, these are opposite words, opposite meanings. I think in Korean you say pandero, right? Opposite. Opposites. In English we would say opposites. Opposites. They're opposites. Okay. Six. A metal is used to make many things. A metal that is used to make many things. Again, we talked about this before. This is the metal that human beings uh, found a long time ago. It's very strong. It's heavy, but it's strong. It's very useful for making many different things. Of course, we're talking about iron. We saw an uh, uh, example of the iron ore that is used to make many things. And in fact, iron is also used to make steel. So uh, steel and iron both have the same properties in the terms that magnets are attracted to these metals, or these metals are attracted to magnets. Okay. Here we have another chart, and this chart is showing us the poles of a magnet. Remember, we have a north pole and a south pole. And look at the way that these bar magnets are arranged, right? In this picture, we see north and north are are, are near each other. They're not together because they're pushing away, but they're close to each other. So what's going on here? Poles that are the same repel each other. They repel, they push each other away from them. Okay? Poles that are different attract each other. So here we have north, right? We have south. These are different poles, so they attract each other. Now this is very interesting. Before I just taught you about opposites, right? Uh, and we can also use that here. North and south are opposites, right? But as we can see, north and south, which are opposites, they attract each other. There's a saying in English, opposites attract. Opposites attract. And of course this comes from magnets, but sometimes people use this to talk about personality, right? So sometimes people say a hot-tempered person is attracted to an easygoing person. Opposite personalities attract. Now, whether that's true or not, you know, there's lots of different cases out there, but it's a common saying in English people use why are those two people, why is that boy, uh, why is the boy and the girl, they're a couple, but they have such different personalities? Well, opposites attract. That's a very common saying to explain that type of situation. It comes from magnets, right? Because south and north are opposites, but they attract each other. So that's a very interesting idea. So poles that are different attract each other, opposites attract. Easy thing to remember. Okay, so now we have a uh, quiz here. Choose the things that will be attracted to magnets. So before in the chart we saw the different types of things that are attracted to magnets. Remember, if the thing has iron or steel, well basically steel has iron in it, so if it's made of iron or if it's made of steel, it will be attracted to a magnet. So let's take a look here. What things will be attracted to magnets? Over here we have fruit, grapes, pear, uh, bananas. Okay, whether or not it's fruit or plastic toys looking like fruit, it doesn't matter. Will they be attracted by magnets? Do they have iron or steel in these things? Remember, whether it's really fruit or if it's plastic, no, they will not be attracted to, to a magnet because they don't have any iron in them, 
right? They don't have enough iron in them. They're, they're not made of iron. So they are not attracted. So A, no, they will not be attracted to uh, magnets. What about over here? What are these things? These are blocks. They're blocks. I'll put that down here. Uh, they're like building blocks. You know, kids will play with them, especially when they have the alphabet, the letters. They'll have different letters on them of the alphabet, and you can make words out of them. But what are these made out of? They are made out of wood. So these are wooden blocks. And as we saw before, wood is not attracted uh, by magnets. So magnets will not attract these things. So no, that's not true. What about over here? What are these? These are, of course, are bottles. What are they made out of? They're made out of glass. Glass bottles. Glass, oops, there is my S, there's my S. Glass, so they're made of glass. They are not attracted by a magnet. So C is not attracted by a magnet. Is there anything that's attracted by a magnet here? Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, look at these. These, uh, these actually are not screws. These are similar to screws, but we call them a special word because they're not the same as a screw. They have a different head on them. These are called bolts, B-O-L-T for one, and we have many, so we put bolts. There are many bolts. They're very similar to screws, which I taught you before, but um, bolts, what are bolts made of? Usually bolts are made of steel, and what does steel have in it? They has iron. So steel bolts, steel bolts has iron in it, so they are attracted to magnets. This is the only thing here in this, pick, in this uh, quiz that will be attracted to magnets. So remember, not everything is attracted by a magnet. Iron and steel are the only two things that are attracted by magnets. Okay, let's move on. Here we have our true-false questions. Number one, a magnet is a piece of metal that attracts steel or iron. So hopefully you remember what we're talking about, of course, in this unit, magnets. What's something special about a magnet is that it attracts. It says attracts, not repel. It attracts. It pulls towards it steel or iron. Yes, iron. That's true. And steel has iron in it. So this is true. This statement is true. Number two, repel means to pull towards. So if I pull something towards me, or if I have a force that, that is uh, pulling something towards me, am I repelling? No, that's not true, right? Repel means to push away. So we have to change this. Uh, we could either say repel means to push away, or we could change it to attract, right? Because the opposite of repel is attract. Attract means to pull towards. That would be true. So we have to change that, right? That's false. Number three, steel is a metal that has iron in it. We just talked about that, right? On this one, I said steel or iron. I, of course, it attracts iron and steel has iron in it. That's true, right? So that's very easy. Steel is a metal that has iron in it. Steel is made from iron. So of course it has iron in it. Okay, that wraps it up for the vocabulary section. Let's take a short break and then we'll come back and take a look at the reading. Okay, welcome back to the reading. Of course, the reading passage is about our subject for this lesson, which is magnets, right? And we're talking about the properties or the characteristics of magnets. So let's take a look. Our first sentence, of course, is about magnets. We see magnets, that's our subject. What's an interesting feature or property of magnets? Well, the most impressive or the most noticeable thing about magnets is that they attract, they pull towards them. They pull things made of iron. So they pull things made of iron towards them. Magnets attract things made of iron. It's very fun to play with, right? We can pick up uh, screws or little pieces of metal with a magnet, and that's kind of fun to, to play around with. But it's also interesting to understand what are the forces going on behind that. Uh, so magnets attract things like paper clips because paper clips are made of steel, right? Steel has iron in it. And steel spoons. So magnets will attract those things. We can pick those things up with a magnet. It looks like magic, 
It's not magic, it's magnetism, okay? They attract objects without touching them, without even touching them. For example, if you have a magnet, a strong magnet, and you have a spoon, you show, you just put them near each other, and without touching, the spoon will come towards the magnet. If you're quick, or if you're steady enough, you can pull that spoon, and they won't touch, right, if you're very good. Or you could use a piece of paper. Put the magnet under the paper, the spoon is on top of the paper, they're not touching, but you can drag that spoon around. So that's interesting. Without touching them, there is a force of attraction between them. Magnets attract metals that have iron in them. Of course, we're talking about that again. It's very similar to our first sentence. Attract metals that have iron in them. So if the metal has iron in it, not just made of iron, but it just if the metal has iron in it, for example, like steel, then it will attract it as well. Magnets don't attract other things. What other things? Magnets do not, do not attract things made of rubber, wood, plastic, etc. Just things made of iron. By the way, just to let you know, uh, magnets actually do attract these things, but the atoms inside rubber, wood, plastic, etc., are they don't change their direction very easily. They there needs to be a really, really strong force, a really, really strong magnet in order to to attract these things. But we we don't have those types of magnets, right? So for our so what we know if we experiment, we see that magnets don't attract rubber, wood, plastic. There's no attraction there. There's no force. We can't see it. We can't detect it. So for our intent and purposes, magnets don't attract things made of rubber, wood, plastic, and etc. Just the iron atoms that change direction so easily so that they are attracted to magnets. Okay, another thing what we talked about with magnets is that they have two poles. They have two poles. Of course, they have a north pole and a south pole. The N, if you look at a magnet, and you know, depending on who made the magnet, they might put an N, or they'll mark the end with, they'll mark one end of the magnet with a letter N. So the N shows the North Pole. N is for North, and the S is for the South Pole, the South. So S is for South, N is for North. There are two different poles of a magnet. Remember, the magnetism, the force of magnetism, goes out of the North and into the South Pole, okay? So that's the direction of the force, out of the North into the South End. Try to put two magnets together, especially if they're the bar-shaped magnet, right? Try to put them together. If the poles are different, right, if you have a North Pole and a South Pole and you put them together, what's going to happen? They will attract each other. They will pull towards each other and they will stick to each other, right? If the poles are the same, you put North Pole and North Pole together, right, they will repel each other. They will repel each other. So north and north don't like each other, right? They will push away from each other. They will repel from each other, okay? So remember, that's what we were talking about before. If the poles are different, difference attract, opposites attract. And that's what we talked about before. It's a very interesting idea. But similarity, if they're the same, they will repel each other. They will push away from each other. Okay, let's move on to our reading skill chart. The reading skill chart, our main idea is the properties of a magnet. We're talking about a magnet. What's special about a magnet? Why do we uh, study magnets? What's interesting about them? Those are the properties that we're talking about. We want to know the features or what about a magnet that's interesting. There are many details that we can use to talk about the properties of the magnet. Many specific properties of the magnet, those are our details. We have three in the chart. In the chart, we need to fill in the blanks. We have four blanks. These are our words. Attract, repel, wood, and rubber. So over here, magnets do not attract things made of. So one property of magnets is that they attract some things, but they do not attract other things. Magnets do not, do not attract things made of what? What things down here are not attracted by magnets? Attract, that's a verb, not a noun. 
Repel, that's another verb, not a noun. Ah, oh, here's a noun, wood. Here's another noun, rubber. We're looking for two things, actually, and we could put them in there, right? So we could put wood or rubber in A, and we can also put wood or rubber in B. In this case, we have rubber and we have wood. So magnets do not attract things made of rubber, wood, plastic, etc. Etc. means and so on, things like that, right? Rubber, wood, plastic, those types of things are not attracted to magnets. Over here, we have another detail about magnets, another feature. If you put together, put together two poles that are different, that are different. So, for example, south and north. If you put south and north together, what will happen? They will what each other? Will they repel each other or will they attract each other? Remember we talked about opposites attract. South and north are opposites. They are different. Different means opposite. So they will attract each other. Opposites attract. If, however, on the other hand, on the other side, if you put together two poles that are the same, that are the same, they will what? If you put north and north together, will they attract? No, they'll do the opposite of that. They will repel. They will repel. They will push away from each other and they will not touch. It's very difficult to get a north pole of one magnet to touch the north pole of another magnet. If you're very strong, you can do it. And if the magnets aren't strong, if the magnets are weak, you can do it. But if the magnets are strong, it's really hard to do it. It's very interesting. That's another experiment to see how strong a magnet is. Because magnets can be weak and they can be strong as well. Okay, let's move on. Here we have our reading comprehension questions. How well did you remember the reading? Let's take a look at these questions here. First one, number one, magnets will not, important, remember, pay attention to whether the sentence is positive or negative. In this case, it's a negative sentence. Magnets will not attract things made of what? Here we have iron, plastic, magnets, okay? So we know that magnets attract iron, right? So that's, they will attract. We're looking for negative, not attract. So that's not the right answer because magnets will attract iron, not will not attract iron. That's not correct. Magnets will not attract plastic. That's true. That's our answer right there. Will not attract things made of magnets. That doesn't make sense right there because, and it's not true because magnets will uh, attract other things. But we don't say things are made of magnets. Magnets are made of metal. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a thing that we say, this thing is made of, a, uh, of magnets. We say it's made of iron or it's made of steel, right? Iron and steel are magnets. Those are the, that's the metal that makes a magnet. So C is not the correct answer. Magnets will not attract things made of plastic. That's what we talked about before. Number two, magnets can attract, can, can attract. They will pull towards them objects, A, without touching them, B, made from rubber, C, but never repel objects, which is a correct answer. Let's go over them. Magnets can attract objects without touching them. Remember we talked about that? I said that if you're very careful, you can take a magnet and a steel spoon, and without touching it, you can make that spoon follow the magnet. Or if you have a piece of paper, you can put the spoon on top and the magnet underneath, and you can uh, make that spoon move around the piece of paper. They're not touching but they're still attracted to each other. And that's what A is saying. They don't touch, but they're still attracted. So magnets can attract objects without touching them. That's true. What about B? Magnets can attract objects made from rubber? No, we're talking about that. Plastic, wood, rubber, etc. Those types of things are not attracted by magnets. How about C? But never repel objects. Magnets can attract objects, but can never repel objects? That's not true because a magnet is an object, right? An object, a magnet is a type of object. So magnets do repel each other. So C is not true either. Okay, let's move on to number three. In number three, we have the same poles. Remember, we're talking about North Pole and South Pole. The same poles of a magnet will repel. So North and North will repel, but a, B, C. Different poles will attract. So North Pole and South Pole will attract. That's true. And that's our answer, right? The same poles of a magnet will repel each other 
different poles will attract each other. Yes. Let's look at B and C for practice. B is magnets cannot attract steel or iron. No, we talked about that. Magnets do attract. Sorry, so we'd have to change that, right? So that's not true. C, different poles will also repel. Different poles. So south and north will also repel? They'll attract and repel? No, they only do one thing. They only attract. So again, C is not uh, the correct answer either. As we saw, A is the correct answer. The same poles of a magnet will repel. South and south will repel. North and north will repel each other. But different poles will attract. North and south poles will attract to each other. Four, magnets will attract objects made of steel. Why? Why will magnets attract objects made of steel? Because why? Remember what we talked about? A, they have the same poles. Steel is not, uh, uh, not all steel is magnetized. It's not, a steel is not a magnet by itself, right? So a steel doesn't have poles by itself, so that's not correct. B, steel has iron in it. Aha, uh -huh. remember we talked about humans first discovered iron, then they, they made tools and weapons out of iron, and they discovered how to make steel using iron. So steel has iron in it. That is true. And C, steel attracts iron? No, that's, that's weird. There's iron in steel, so that's not the right answer, right? So the right answer, magnets will attract objects made of steel. Why? Because steel has iron in it. That's why magnets will attract it. Iron is attracted by magnets, so anything that has iron in it will be attracted by magnets. So that's why steel. That's the reason why. Okay, let's move on here to our chart. that We saw this chart before. Do you remember what we talked about before? Uh, do you remember these labels? What do magnets attract? So if you have a magnet, what can you attract with your magnet? These are things that are attractable or that you can attract. These are things that are not attractable or you cannot, do not attract with a magnet. Let's take a look at these. What are these? Remember what these are? These are buttons. What kind of buttons can be attracted by a magnet? Of course, whoa, did you see that spinning in? Iron buttons are attracted by magnets. What about these? These are buttons too. What kind of buttons are they? They are not attracted. Whoa, here we got this, this, this circle thing again. Plastic buttons. They are plastic buttons. They are not attracted by magnets. Over here, we have a, 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 this one, of course, we're talking about. A spoon. What kind of spoon is it? What is it made of? Oh, we have the steel spoon it's circling on in there, okay? The steel spoon is attracted by magnets. What about these? These look like they're spoons too, right? What are they made out of? Do you remember? That's right, plastic spoons. Plastic spoons are not attracted by magnets. Down here, we have a, a little fire truck. It's kind of a car, right? It's a vehicle, and it's made out of steel. So a steel car is attracted by magnets. Over here, this is a car too. It's a little toy car. What's it made out of? Do you remember? It's made out of wood. A wooden car is not attracted by a magnet. So plastic and wood are not attracted by magnets. Of course, rubber and other things like this are not attracted by magnets. Over here, iron, steel, and steel, because steel has iron in it, these things are attracted by magnets. Okay, well that was a very interesting lesson. I was uh, interested to, to learn about magnets as well. I hope you learned a lot of interesting things about magnets. They're really fun to play with and it's very interesting to notice how magnets are used. And it's good to read about magnets too. Read some more about magnets. See how they were used and when they were discovered and how they are important to people. Okay, well that wraps it up for today. We'll see you guys next time. Take care everybody.